Hello friends, this video on organisms and population part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next important component that we would like to discuss after temperature, light and soil is water. Water is essential for the survival of all living organisms starting from plants. If you stop watering your plants for a couple of days, the plants end up dying. So water is essential for their survival. They, it, it is not only needed for photosynthesis, plants also receive their nutrients and minerals through water because they remain dissolved in water. Water is essential for living organisms like human beings and other animals. They all need to consume water to maintain the right amount of water within their body. So water is essential for all sort of living organisms starting from tiny organisms to huge organisms. Now water has huge significance in our life. If you talk about human beings, we use water for a variety of activities. Not only for drinking purposes, water is also used for cleaning our clothes, for bathing, for preparing food, in cooking. Uh, so a variety of purposes we find applications of water and similarly it is used by other animals as well. So water is something which is without which life cannot exist on this earth. So if the water in a river or pond gets polluted with some harmful or toxic substances, all the organisms living in that water end up dying. So that's because they are all directly dependent on water. The aquatic organisms, they receive oxygen for their survival, which is present in dissolved form in water. There are so many aquatic plants which get all their minerals and nutrients from water. So water is extremely significant, it is a basic necessity for all life forms. However, these days human intervention results in scarcity of water. Now since the population is increasing, the needs of human beings are increasing to satisfy their own needs. They are misusing water, they are wasting water and as a result in a lot of areas water has to become scarce. So we have discussed about what you have learned about water and how it can be managed better in your junior classes. Now based on which type of animals can survive in which type of water, animals has been divided or categorized into two types, urihaline and stenohaline. So when we talk about urihaline, these are those aquatic organisms which are tolerant of a wide range of salinity. Now what do we mean by salinity? So salinity is nothing but uh, the concentration of salt in water. Now, there are many different types of aquatic environment as well. For example, if you think of uh, the oceans, so there the concentration of salt is very much high as compared to that of fresh water, right? So a lot of aquatic organisms, they can survive in areas with high salinity as well as in uh, water bodies with low salinity. That means you can find a lot of fishes. We can survive very well in oceans as well as in fresh water. So let's look at example of um, a urihaline. So if you talk about a urihaline fish, salmon would be an example. So this is a type of fish which can which can survive in a wide range of salinity. When you talk about stenohaline, so it is just the opposite. So they have uh, they are restricted to a narrow range of salinity. So when the salinity changes, their survival becomes difficult. So there are many marine fish which are stenohaline. So they die in water with less salinity. So if you take them out from uh, the sea and put them into a fresh water, now since there is a huge difference in the salinity range, so they are not able to survive. So one example of a stenohaline fish would be a goldfish. So these goldfish, they tend to die in ocean because they are not able to bear that excessive salinity. So why it is called stenohaline? The word steno means narrow and the word haline means salt. So those organisms which can only survive in a narrow range of salt concentration, they are called stenohaline. So you see different types of organisms have different types of needs for their survival. Some needs, uh, some can survive in 
I mean, you know, like uh, more saline water as well as less saline water. Some can survive only in specific type of water salinity. Again, if you when you talk about temperatures, some can survive only in regions with high temperatures. Some can survive only in regions with low temperatures. So the needs of different organisms are completely different from each other. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.